let's get started. Um, so thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coordinating. Um, and I know I say it a lot, but it's truer and truer every time that I really, we couldn't do this um, without your help. So, so appreciative of all the, of all the time that you put into this. Um, there are no real big changes this year in terms of, of data collection or anything like that, but I did try and make the loon count form um, hopefully a little bit more, more uh, not simple, but I added some example um, on there because I think one of the biggest things we run into every year is the question of parents. Um, what is a parent? Uh, how do I mark this? Because we'll get forms back and they will either have nothing in that column or some will have check marks and some will have numbers. Um, and I totally understand. It really is a um, a hard a hard thing to determine sometimes. Um, so let me, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Um, and I think we'll start, we're just going to start by going over the count form and then um, we can get into to some other questions. Um, so can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. And please at any time, jump in if you have questions or if you need clarification on anything. Um, I guess I should have started with saying, so as everyone knows, the count is on June 20th this year, third Saturday in July. Um, so everything on top here is exactly the same. We didn't change anything up here. Um, just a reminder to, um, hopefully remind your, your counters to please put the, their survey area um, mm -hmm. on their count forms. A lot of times if they've included their map, you know, of course we can look and see, but it's just nice to, it's a, one of the ways that we can check to make sure that um, everything is covered. And then when I update or a volunteer updates their information every year, we have the correct survey area. So we're, we're making sure that people are um, given their same survey area year after year, because we know that people really do want that. Um, so down here, what I've done is add these example lines that will hopefully help counters um, have a better idea of how to enter this. So of course we want the time, we want the number of uh, adults. And then what I've done here is change this to show that we really just want check marks here. Um, we don't need them to put numbers because basically for us on our end, if there's a check mark there, that means a pair. That's all. So if it is, you know, even if they wrote one adult, it that doesn't change between two adults and one adult. Both are still counted as suspected parents or a pair. Um, so all we're asking, if, if someone thinks that it is a parent, um, to put a check mark there. Um, and you'll see here that we have a couple different scenarios that would uh, mean that someone would check that box. So one, they see two adults and there's a chick with them. That is kind of the clearest you can be that that is, those are suspected parents. But then you come down here where they just see one single loon on a nest. Um, same thing. So for us, that is a loon sitting on a nest. We know that they have, um, that there's another loon because there's a pair and there's a nest. And so we're going to do suspected parents, even if there's no chicks, if there's no eggs, doesn't matter. Um, if a single loon is on a nest, we're going to consider it a pair or a parent. Um, so again, we're just looking for check marks. Was there a question there? Sorry. Yeah. Is, is there any other time you would see a single loon without a chick and consider it a possible parent only if it's on the nest? Would you, I mean, if you have seen the loon singly with a with a chick like the day before, or with, is it just has to be right then? We're really, it's, it's what, so we're still going with what you are seeing during the actual count. Right. Um, if in that circumstance, what I would do is not mark that, but put that in the comments. And then when we are looking at it later on, like after the count, um, we may then decide that we're okay to include that. But generally, we really are just looking at what you see during the actual count. Um, so basically, basically to count a, a single loon as a parent, you, it has to be on the nest. 
Is that correct? No, I mean, so loons, if they're close to each other. So if you see two loons that are swimming together within like, you know, 20, 30 feet of each other, I yeah. would consider those suspected parents. Yeah, no, I'm not. That's not the problem. What I'm saying is if you see a single loon and it, you only see a single loon, it, must it be on the nest to be counted as a parent? That's what it sounds like to me, but I just wanted to be sure. Yes, I I think okay. so. Um, or if it's swimming right around a nest and it's not leaving that area. Okay. Like uh, so, if yeah. it, it is within, um, yeah, if, if it is right in that area, it's really not leaving. I think that you can assume that that is apparent mm-hmm. to that nest. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you're correct. If you're if you're just seeing a single loon, unless they are near or on a nest or with a chick, um, it's hard yes. to to think that it's part of a pair. Um, and we know that, you know, um, we're, of course, during the loon count, not gathering every single pair. We, you know, we know that. But because of the, um, you know, the total number, it, it, we're comfortable with the amount that we're getting and that it is showing a good representation. Um, but these, the, yeah, keep questions like that coming because you may get that exact same kind of thing from your counters, they may ask. Um, yeah, Diane. Uh- I, and just to clarify, then, if you know, you see two loons and you know they're a pair, you can call them suspected parents, even if you haven't seen a nest? Yes, absolutely. Yep, okay. You do not have to have seen a nest um, to consider them parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and then here we just have on the third one, you know, this is three adults swimming near each other. So we are going to assume that that's just three adults, not two pair, you know, not one pair and another adult. Um, Just assume that it's, that it's three adults. Um, So I'm hoping that that will make things a little bit clearer for folks. And then again, I I wrote down here too, if you're unsure about whether or not to check the parent box, use the comment um, section to describe what you see. Uh, So, you know, that same thing, Kathleen, if they were like, um, you know, I, there's a single loon who was swimming within 25 feet of a nest and they're not sure whether or not to mark that they would just write that in the comments. And then when we go back through, um, we'll determine whether or not we would consider that as suspected parent. Um, Thank you. Um, and then I have just down, you know, continue observations on a separate sheet if needed. Not, not many people usually need that second <laughs> sheet, but we do have, we do have some that, you know, could go on. Loons are everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. This again, as we know, is really important. Like, did you do a complete count? Um, that's really important for us to know whether or not the whole their whole survey area was counted or whether the whole lake was counted. Um, nests. So this is one of those ones where you don't have to have seen the nest to mark it um, on there. So if you know the nest, you can put it on there. And like always, we say, you know, we don't want people actually searching for nests during the count. If you happen to see one, great, put it on there. But if you do know of one, I know a lot, most of you know where your nests are, um, you know, people can put that, put that in there. Um, And then questions. And then you'll notice that we've taken off the um bit about our B120 project or the loon restoration project in the raft. Um, so if you have questions about that, you can reach out to me and I'll direct you to Tracy. But we are headed into um kind of the last year of the project next year. So she isn't recruiting anymore, um, but is still working with folks. So if you have any loon raft questions, that will all be um to Tracy and her team for this year. Um, which is a great team. I don't know if anyone, Bambi, I don't know if you've spoken. Has anyone else, is anyone else working with the RAF program? Yes. Um, you are. Yeah, you yeah, are. a lot of you are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the, yeah. the team this year is great. I don't know if you spoke, but um, I really like them. So um, direct any of those questions to Tracy. Of course, if you email me, that's fine. I'll just, I'll forward it to Tracy. Uh, but she really is the, the, the RAF person. Um, and same thing. So, you know, if you, you're going to know what artificial rafts you have and whether they're in use, um, 
people are great about using the comment section. So you can, you know, let people know to keep doing that. Um, I think that's it. So are there any other questions on the count form itself? No, that looks great. Yeah, it does. We'll see. Well, you know, we'll see if it, when when the forms come through, if it, if it ended up helping at all. Um, okay, so I'm going to now pull up and um, just to double check, does everyone on the call now have your receive your stuff via mail or by email? Does everyone actually have? Okay. Yes. Um, I know that some, some may, you know, the mail. <laughs> Not always super fast, but uh, hopefully everyone gets that. Okay. Um, let me pull up. All right. So um, if you have paper forms, you know, a little bit different because you, you, you have, I've sent those physical forms to you to mail out, um, but you may still get maybe some latecomers, um, or you may not have, you know, you have extra people or new lakes or something, and you need to find some resources. Of course, you can always email me and I can just, you know, send them to you. But um, we do have, you know, if someone reaches out a week before to cover something, we want to be able to also find stuff um, on the website. So both um, in the letter that was sent out, as well as the um, what do I call it? The timeline document. Um, there are, there's the link to uh, the Loon Count resources page, and then it will prompt you to enter the password for that, um, which I have on there being Loon Count 2024 exclamation point. And I do try and say multiple times that the exclamation point is included in the password. You do have to put that in or else not let you in. Um, so this is where you can find all of the materials that you or your counters will need. Um, the survey instructions are exactly the same. Nothing has changed on there, um, you know, except for the what I showed you on the count form. Um, people are doing the, you know, the same stuff. Um, count survey form is on there. And then the complicated one, the map gallery, which is always a little bit, um, uh, hard, hard for people to find. So let me, when you click on that, so the map gallery, if you click on that, it brings you to, um, and I'm not sure if it's going to show you, let's see. Does it show you a new blank screen there? Is it showing you Dropbox? No. Yeah. No, I, I it took me straight to the, to the screen with the like maps. Whoops. Okay. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. Okay. Um, because <laughs> what I want to do actually is because I got to log out. I'm logged in with myself on there, which means it looks very different than what you would see um, because I I have uploaded everything. So let me log out of it quickly so that we can look, we can see it, um, how you would see it. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, log out. Now I can feel comfortable sharing it. <laughs> it looks it looks the same. Um, so when you click on the Loon Maps, um, this is what you'll see. So 2024 Loon Count Maps. Um, get rid of you. Um, and then we have survey area, um, the aerial view, and the whole lake grayscale. Um, personally, if I were like going, you know. I may, like I would do away um, with having some of these. I personally love the the individual survey area and the whole like grayscale. I don't, I know some folks use the aerial, but um, to me, these are really the kind of the two most useful. Um, mm -hmm. But most folks are gonna go to the survey area folder um, because most lakes have multiple survey areas. Well, not most, but quite a few. Um, so if people will then click on the survey area and then everything is alphabetical. Um, 
So they'll just have to scroll down. And actually, what I was going to try is, can you search? No. Um, so really, the the most frustrating thing with that is that you can't, there's no way to search for the lake. I just tried to see if I could, um, like, can you know, oh, actually, aha, wait. Let's see here. Let's look for, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, it won't let you. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's, you know, it's not um, the most user-friendly in that sense, but you will just then have to make sure folks know to scroll down and that they should be able to find their um, lake and then their survey area, which will be that second number. And do make sure that people are paying attention to the Midas number, especially if you're on a long lake or, um, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. We do want to make sure you have the correct one. Um, so I don't, we only have 10 sections, so it's not a huge, huge lake, but I've had such poor success with my counters getting to the right map from the directions that I'm now sending out. When I send out the directions, I am sending, I'm attaching a copy of their particular survey map to the letter because okay. it's just. Do you know what it is? Like, is it, so it, it, it's just fault, like getting to the correct link and then getting to this page is what's hardest or i really don't know what causes it people come in with all kinds of maps maps of a different lake <laughs> maps of another area and they have <laughs> their little you know stuff on top of it so i've just it just seems it just seems easier to me right. my personal self to just send them their area because it's yeah. only 10 it's not like i have you know 50 right. areas to think about yeah and i do think that i mean if if you're able to do that. I, I think that is really helpful. Um, you know, for some folks who have quite a few, I know that it would right. be easier if they could come here and find it. You know, right. I'm if I'm not sure another way to make getting to this link um, simpler. But if you hear of anybody who says, "Well, why don't you just do this?" Let me know <laughs> if we could, if there is a way to make it make it simpler. Um, I know we've seen all sorts of maps and that is actually, that's a, that's a good segue into one point I do want to make about the maps is that as much as we can to make sure that counters are using these 2024 maps. So mm -hmm. in, you know, 90% of the cases, the 2024 maps are exactly the same as the 2023 and it's not a huge deal, but, um, I've had a few folks and our volunteer who creates all the maps um you know say well my map looks wrong um mm -hmm. and it's because they're using a map from 10 years ago mm -hmm. and it's been divided differently per their requests over the you know last 10 years um so that's kind of one of the first things if you if someone contacts you and says well my map is like this map you know that i got off here this isn't right um double check that they are using the 2024 um mm -hmm. because there have been changes um, so they, you know, hopefully that's what they're using. Um, I did already have one person, one coordinator contact me that they weren't able to find some of their maps on here. Um, so if you hear that as well, let me know all the maps that, um, lakes that have been counted that were counted last year, as well as, um, a few additional ones should be on here. Um, but like, especially for the, um, this section with the survey areas, it's something like 4,200 maps. I mean, it's a big number of maps. So, and I literally have to go in and then like copy and upload. So there is definitely a good chance that I like accidentally miss one. So if there's not a map on there, let me know. Um, and I'm sure it's in my my computer folders, but just didn't make it onto Dropbox. Um, that being said, there have, you know, we have missed some maps in the past. so. Um, there's a, you know, there's a chance that maybe we would, we are actually missing a map so we can get that sorted um, if needed as well. Um, let's see here, I think, I don't think that there, there's nothing different um, on the maps themselves. Uh, again, there are a few that have boundary lines that have been redrawn because people requested that um that should should all be done um 
like always, we were requesting that the counters take the uh, map out with them and mark it on there. That it, that's kind of the least of a um, issue that usually happens, but no problem. Um, any other questions about the maps? No. Um, all right. So I think, you know, those again, these are your two loon count forms. Um, does anybody have questions about the counter contact forms? Though, do you know who your counters are? Do you know what lakes, you know, lakes are assigned to or anything? Um, you know, I think, and maybe I won't share this recording, but everyone on this call is incredibly organized. I've never had any. I don't know. Both. So it's, <laughs> like <I> said, <laughs> you all know <laughs> but um again you know when at, at the end of the season um and this year I did it myself as I went through you know all of your um counter contact forms that you updated and I updated those too so it you know there's definitely a chance that as I'm typing in there was a typo or something so if you have any questions about what I included on there, their survey area or their email address or anything like that, please reach out um, because it, it, it could be that I typoed. Um, but kind of like always, you know, we try and keep people as long as they want to, to stay in the same survey areas. Um, in terms of any new counters, um, you know, I know, so if someone reaches out to me, um, and says they want to count somewhere. I know, you know, I first look at our whole list of counters and see if that survey area is covered. Um, and if it is, generally I let them know and then I may forward them to you and say, hey, if you need some extra help, here is somebody, but I have let them know that that spot is, you know, currently covered. Um, um, and then if someone reaches out and I see that it looks like this lake is in, um, your survey area, uh, excuse me, is in your um, region, your <laughs> the region that you coordinate. Um, can you help get them set up? It looks like this lake or this um, survey area is still open. Uh, and that is also something I want to touch on is that the kind of boundary areas for your individual regions don't always make a whole lot of sense. Um, so when I came on and kind of started learning where everything from, you know, region one to region 16, and then everything in between um, is situated. And even Tracy, like, couldn't exactly explain some of it to me. It's the boundaries aren't um, don't always make sense. So I may contact you and be like, you know, can you just help this person get their count forms or their maps? And that lake maybe 350 miles from you. <laughs> but on our list, for whatever reason, um, it's in your survey area, it may be at the or in your region, and maybe at the very tip. We're not expecting you to know about that lake. Um, it's just getting them the account forms, getting helping them get a map, and then getting them on your counter contact form for next year. If you have questions, um, if they're asking you questions about access points or um, anything about the history of the lake and you don't know, that's okay. And that's when you can kind of bring me in and I can also help and explain that, um, you know, a lot of times our coordinators, yes, they know about a lot of the lakes in their regions, but there are times where we're just looking for some help kind of corralling people and getting them set up on lakes. Um, but we're not expecting you to, you know, know the exact topography of of the area um and again i'm always you know here if you're just like i don't have any idea what this person is talking about um i am happy to help and that happens you know we get that every year so um that's totally fine i did get one that was way out of my area yes yeah, yeah. I can and, I, and again say like i'm not i think <laughs> what happens is that when a lake gets added like when lakes were added randomly in subsequent years, they kind of just picked a survey area and it didn't necessarily correlate where with the actual um, location, like the geographic location of where like Diane, you are located. Um, yes. So I think that's 
kind of what it is. And if it is something where like, I don't know, you're in Kittery and they're, it, this lake is in Rangeley, like, no, that doesn't, it <laughs> doesn't like, I'll find, <laughs> I'll find something else. And Diane, I'll, I haven't looked at that one exactly, but I can't remember how far it was. Um, it's, uh, I think it's up near, I don't know, it's way up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you sent it to me because one year I did a survey on Mount on Mount Chase up at Mount Chase Lodge. Uh, maybe yes. <laughs> if I was there, I might as well do it. <laughs> it is, you know, I, what is this? This is in most most of you have been doing the you know involved with the loon count much longer than I have been, but um, there are since since I've started there are some funny things with kind of how this was originally organized yeah. um and I think going going back if we if we could do it again there were there were definitely changes that I would make um and so we're just kind of as as things come up trying to um kind of update things as much as we can but I think there for a long time there'll probably be some of these little quirks that <laughs> are just a result of a project start, starting in the eighties and, you know, people, um, a big pro, you know, a big project starting in the eighties and things weren't totally figured out. Um, and we still, you know, I'm not saying I, we still don't have fixed. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, let me pull up. Um, the other thing is weather. So weather is always something that we're that we're watching, um, and it's just one of those things where there, you know, there's not a whole lot um, we can we can do or say about it except for we want everybody to be safe. We want all the counters to be safe. Um, of course, if there is thunder and lightning, you know, <laughs> I don't. please tell your counters to only go out if it's safe. Um, we really, you know, don't often adjust the time at all, especially because so many coordinators have multiple lakes in their region. If you are a single lake coordinator, it is possible if you can get a hold of everyone and you need to wait for a half hour, um, we have, we can let that as long as it's like still within that seven to eight time period. Um, if you need to be start a half an hour late as long as everybody on the lake is starting at that same time, um, we will accept that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's one of those things where it, it can be really unfortunate if you've got that pea soup fog and people just can't go out. Um, mm -hmm. Just try and remind your counters, because I know it's really upsetting not to be able to get out there and to know that maybe um, your numbers aren't going to re get recorded. Um, a couple things that you can let folks know is that Again, no data is data. Um, so, excuse me, no data are data. Um, <laughs> all of this is gonna is helpful in some way. So if we are seeing year after year after year, um, you know, that July has what? More and more thunder and lightning, more and more fog or whatever it may be, all of this is helpful in some way. Um, you know, whether if we're seeing how things are affecting um, climate and all of that. So I know it's frustrating. I know it's hard. Um, but again, just let folks know to, to be safe. Um, and that again, if your whole lake can start a half an hour late, that's okay. We really don't go beyond that. We don't want people kind of counting af after eight. Um, um, and that will, that that's, that's, I'm totally comfortable with that being your call. Um, if you want to, if you need to start at seven thirty as opposed to seven, um, I'm very comfortable with that. With that being your call, um, those of you that have multiple lakes, you know, I it's that's it, a really tough. One. <laughs> it's a tough one. You can't get in contact with everybody generally. Um, so if you have kind of a a point person on another lake and and they are comfortable talking to everybody on that lake. You can do that, but it's much harder to organize when you have, you know, multiple lakes. Um, but if people reach out, just let them know again, like generally just be safe. The count is seven to seven thirty. Um, that's kind of, yeah. And I, it, it's more that, um, 
you know, we don't want kind of individual people um, making the, oh, I'll just start at 730 um, choice for themselves. We really are trying to leave that to, to you know, to the coordinators. Um, but hopefully it won't matter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what's that? Okay, so weather. Um, and then also I, as a reminder that some people, so anybody who is surveying over 750 acres, um, they do have, they do are allowed a full hour to count. Um, so any, whether it is a single lake or a survey area, if it's over 750 acres, they can have the whole hour. Um, so if they are, um, I guess that, so that would make a change that if a whole lake wasn't starting until 7.30, they would have until 8.30. But I don't, I really don't think there's that many that that would affect. Um, yeah. Um, so seven to eight, if you are counting over 750 acres. Let's see, I think I'm gonna pull up the, All right, bear with me. I'm just, oh. Sorry, I'm just going to, it looks like one person didn't see the Zoom link. So I am just going to send this to him. It's one of our, um, we have a couple of new coordinators this year. Um, so, Jay. So I just want to pull up the um, timeline document. We can see if there are any other questions from here. Um, so again, July 20th. The number of things that I have to check to say, to make sure they say July 20th. I keep finding different things that um, haven't been updated since last year. So um, again, always the third, third Saturday. Um, so if you have survey areas or lakes that need counters, you know, we always encourage um, you to try and find somebody for that. If you're having a really hard time um, and you really want to get something covered, let me know. I'm meeting um, at the end of a week and a half with our communications team. And that's when we develop kind of our, our um, seven week pre loon count um, communication and outreach plan. So if there is anything that you are interested in us kind of specifically targeting. If you have a certain area where you're really looking for more counters um, or anything else, just let me know and I can try and integrate that um, into our plan for the next seven weeks or two months, I guess. Um, this is, you know, there are basically three documents that you need to make sure that your loon counters have. Um, so that's the letter, you know, from you um the instructions and then the survey form those are are really what they need um oh and their map four things um so you know here is that link that i'm hoping is is easy for people to get to with the, with the um password there um which is also um you know i think the easiest way probably if you are emailing people is to straight up copy this and put that in the body of the email um, and say, find your map here um, <laughs> with the password. Again, I know that there are going to be people that, that, um, that, you know, for, for whatever reason, it's not working or it's hard to find. Um, so they may be, you know, maybe asking, asking for some more help from you. Um, Um, always a, good to do a reminder, please fill out the form front and back. 
um, remind people that there is a back to the form. Um, and that is another, we get quite a few, um, you know, previous year data forms as well. So if we can try and get as many folks as possible to, um, you know, have the 2024 account <laughs> form. Um, as you know, you know, I get kind of between the loon count and I think the latest I got them were it's probably around Christmas time. Um, there are people that, uh, you know, hear about the loon count or maybe have been involved on the periphery for years and for whatever reason, you know, don't talk to me or don't talk to a coordinator and just somehow find a count form and send them in. Um, so I had, you know, we get all sorts of different things. So this is not, uh, you know, we can try as hard as we can to make sure everyone has the exact same count form. But I know I will get something and that is a count form, um, you know, from 2004. And I've, I've, <laughs> I've had that before. It does, they're out there, they're floating out there. We're trying to, um, again, get as many people as possible to use that 2024 one um, because it just does have, you know, kind of the most up-to-date information that we're looking for. Um, and then the, you know, you've got actual count day. So I am generally always available on count day. I'm not usually out anywhere because I like to be near um, service in case there are any questions. Um, so I will, you know, you know, be available by phone or email if you have any questions. Um, I am hoping, and this is not um, confirmed yet, but my hope is to have a, um, like a loon count party um, <laughs> that evening at Gilsland Farm. So I know that is not, um, that distance is not, um, you know, close enough for some people um and in that you know we're just i know that and and, I'm, and i apologize for that um but we are kind of limited in what we can do and uh you know a couple of our parties last year were more north so we are trying to do something um more south this year so if you're around then if you're able to make it to falmouth if you're interested at all um you can kind of pencil that in i'm still in the planning processes of that or planning stages so again nothing's confirmed yet but um, i'm hoping that we can do something um, and then that, you know, making sure your counters get you, get you data, which I know it's, can be a struggle sometimes. Um, but I really appreciate any follow-ups you can do, um, to then get me those. And again, this, um, this isn't, this isn't the crowd that I have <laughs> any issues with. So, um, you, you know, thank you so much. We, I always get your, um, your things. So I appreciate that. One thing, um, one thing that worked for me in terms of getting those forms is that I just pick a place. We have a 10, almost a 10 mile lake and we have nine sections, but we just wrapped up at the end and people bring coffee and muffins and hang out and talk about what they saw. And then they take a little minute to check their forms. And usually everyone's are really good. And I, maybe there's only one that I get, you know, le less than a week later. So it really makes a big difference and it builds a lot of, uh, camaraderie that people people don't want to give up their loom counter job sometimes the <laughs> muffins make a big difference <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea I love that I love I think that's a great idea we have a couple um a couple people who do kind of something similar and I do think I've heard we've gotten some great pictures of um and some great stories that have come out of that so yeah I'll send I, you some pictures this year yeah, <laughs> I definitely if you can do that I definitely suggest anything like that that's great um um here and then you've got your the important links which are on that timeline document so there again as well as the is that link to all the materials um a lot of times we get you know questions on where do i find loon count data um so um there's the link to that i can put a direct link oh i, I mean it talks about it here but um there's that um fish led free so if you have questions about that um, please, you can, you can let me know and I'll forward it. I know many of you know, um, Laura Williams, some of you may not, uh, she has been involved with the coastal birds project and the piping plovers for years, um, but is now a full-time staff member. So in her off season, she's doing all of the fish led free, um, stuff. So if you have questions about that, you can, you can reach out and I can connect you. Um, and then 
this uh, our page on what to do if you find an injured or dead loon. Um, make sure you do. Ooh, actually, maybe I can pull it up right now. Um, it's not. It's not dramatically. Oh, hey, look at that. So I need to make sure I update that. <laughs> I think it's just on our actual um, website. It's changed. Um, we're just saying basically, well, basically they're saying you don't, don't touch, don't touch at all. Um, if, if it's a dead loop, don't touch it. Don't double bag it. You know, just don't, you want to get in contact. Um, you know, let me know. You can reach out to me or Tracy, um, and, or you can go straight to, um, um, the biodiversity research Institute. You can reach out to them and they can, depending on where you are, they may be able to help collect. But um, just with kind of how things um, are looking um, with influenza and stuff, they're just saying don't don't touch. Um, mm -hmm. So any if you have any questions or again you find a dead loon, let us know. Reach out. Um, if you can get pictures, that's great. Um, but we just I wouldn't you know don't touch them if you don't have to. Um, Injured, same things. You all, you know, know who to um, to reach out with. You're welcome to give me a call. To call Tracy, we'll help connect you with with people. Um, I think probably I don't know every. It's probably at least one call um, every loon count, um, and then there's multiple calls throughout the year. I know I've spoken with I don't, some of you have probably spoken with Tracy about this last year as well. That um, because of the high water prior to the loon count. There, were, there was like it was like this oh everything is great this season there's no you know we're that we were receiving a fraction of the calls um and then later on there were quite a few um dead chicks dead loons um so it was just happened it just seemed to shift to later in the season um and then that um, the last thing kind of for me is that just so you all know, I will be out of the country from um, <laughs> June 19th to July 5th, which I I know, terrible timing, but that's when I'm going to be out of the, out mm -hmm. of the country. Um, I will have, I will make sure everyone has the contact information for Natalie Kahn, who is our new administrative um, conservation administrative assistant. So if there are questions or you need materials, um, Natalie will be your point person for those two weeks. Um, but I'll, you know, I'll be back on the fifth. So plenty of time before the loon count. Um, but I know that a lot of people are, are doing different things or, you know, are organizing their counters during that time. So, um, if you have questions, we'll make sure that you have that. 